Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. Many of you have asked me how to make cards with an electronic cutting machine. In this video, I will show you five easy card making techniques using the Cricut Explore. If you don't have a Cricut and are curious about getting one, then this video might inspire some crafty ideas or perhaps give you a good reason to get one. If you're going to get a Cricut machine, I highly recommend getting a bundle because you'll get the most bang for your buck. I'll put a link down below to some of my favorites. So sit back, subscribe, and let's get to some beginner Cricut card making tutorials. Well, hello there, Cricut. If you're wondering whether or not to get a Cricut machine for card making, or perhaps you have one but you don't know how to use it to make cards, then you've come to the right video. The Cricut line of electronic cutting machines have become very popular lately for its ease of use and the almost endless possibilities for paper crafting. I'll be using my Cricut Explore Air 2 with its simple to use buttons and its handy tools. We'll get right into some card making using the Cricut. For these handmade card ideas, please keep in mind that I use my Cricut as well as some traditional card making supplies like my stamps. Cutting basic shapes with the Cricut is a cinch. Once you have your Cricut machine set up and your Cricut design space all downloaded and ready to go, you can start creating projects. Being a Cricut Access member, that's a membership for Cricut, gives you access to a lot of different templates and files for you to create your paper crafts. But for this first technique, I'm gonna show you how to just create basic shapes using your Cricut within design space. So for this, you're going to hit new project, from the menu on the left, you're gonna scroll down and select shapes. And then from here, you can just choose any shape from this selection to cut out. You can resize any of these shapes to pretty much any size that can fit on your cutting mat. It's also very easy to cut out multiple shapes at once by just selecting the size and shape of your shape and then right clicking and hit duplicate or there's a button to the side where you can hit duplicate as well and if all of these are on one cutting mat then you can just run it through your machine and cut them all out at one time now i still use metal dies and my traditional die cutting machines like my genemi junior or my spelled binders m machine but there are times where i want a specific length or width or size of a shape and that's where the cricut comes in handy for me to customize that shape for this example i'll pull up a square shape i'll hit unlock and this gives me the ability to change the length and width and size of this square slash rectangle really easily it could be any specification I need it to be. Going back to my card example, I'm gonna start by making out some hearts. So I'll select the heart shape. Then I'm going to just grab this little button here and play around with the size and shape until it's something I like. As I mentioned before, if you hit the unlock button, you can really play around with the dimensions of the shape. You can make it a wide shape or a tall and skinny shape. If you need a specific size of a shape, then you can enter in the exact dimensions at this toolbar at the top. Cricut's design space software is pretty user-friendly and simple to use. If you're not looking to do a lot of customizations, then it is definitely a great program. If you're a first time Cricut user, you should know that the placement of your designs within design space isn't permanent and you'll see what I mean by the next step. So I'm placing all of my hearts here, but it doesn't mean that that's the way it's going to cut. So I'll go and hit make it in the top right corner. The next step brings me to this screen and you see that all of my hearts jumped around a little. Cricut software does this automatically because it wants to save material for you. So it moves them in what it thinks is the most efficient uh, cutting space. But if you don't like how Cricut arranged them, you can certainly just move them back into the position that you want it. Then you'll hit continue to go on to the next screen. And this is where the software is linking up with your machine. I connect mine by Bluetooth. So it just takes a few extra seconds to uh, establish a connection. You can always just hardwire yours in via USB and that'll be a much faster connection. You can set your material that you're cutting here or over on the machine. I'll show you that in just a few moments. But once you've selected what material you're going to use, then it's time to get your cutting mat set and ready to cut. 
Here are the two most popular cutting mats for Cricut. It's the light grip in the, me in the blue and the medium grip in the green. And the grip is just referring to how tacky it is and not like bad tacky, just how sticky it is. Every cutting mat comes with this plastic protector sheet. This sheet prevents any like stray debris or dust getting onto your mat. So you definitely want to save that piece and do not throw it away. It's meant to just protect your mat when it's not in use. So since my mat is currently in use, I'm going to stick my paper down right at the top left corner and you can see that it sticks to the cutting mat without any glue or anything. It's just a temporary hold um, of my cardstock to the cutting mat. Once your machine is on, you'll want to insert your cutting mat with the hole at the top. There are two little doohickeys <laughs> on either side to help you guide your cutting mat in as evenly as possible. And you'll see that the knob on the right also displays what material you're using. So you want to make sure that is um, the right selection for your material. And mine is, so I'll hit that blinking load mat button. And then you'll see a second blinking light and that's the cricket button. And that is when you are ready to cut your material. Here is where you want to make sure your mat is loaded correctly, that there's nothing obscuring the back and that your material is, selection is accurate because that will determine how deep your blade will go. The Cricut machine actually determines and adjusts the blade for you. So when all of that is good and ready, you can press the blinking Cricut button and the machine will do all of the cutting for you. If this is your first electronic cutting machine, I'll just play you a little snippet of how it's supposed to sound like or what most of them should sound like while it's cutting. These sounds are perfectly normal. In fact, if you do this often enough, you'll know <laughs> when to listen for when it doesn't sound normal or something stuck. But, um, you know, I just wanted to point this out because for a beginner, it might be a little jarring, you know, if you're used to a manual die cutting machine or, or electronic die cutting machine. Once your machine is done cutting, the load and unload button will start blinking and you can press it to unload your cutting mat. And if you can see somewhat that the all my designs are cut onto the paper and it didn't cut the mat, that, why, that is why the selection of material is very important so it can ac accurately uh, place the blade where it needs to go. Now it's time to peel our design off of the cutting mat. Cricut also makes some handy tools to help you with this process. You can certainly use your uh, hands and fingernails, but sometimes the tools really do come in handy. As you saw, I peeled up the negative piece of my cardstock and now I'm just using the scraper tool to scrape my designs off. Then I will place the plastic protective sheet back on the cutting mat so it's ready for the next use. I'll place little strips of foam tape on the back of all of my little hearts and they're all of uniform size and shape. I only had to run it through my machine once. <laughs> so the Cricut is definitely great for mass producing. Then I'll stick all my hearts on, put some more foam tape on my stamped and heat embossed sentiment and stick that on. Then I will take another note card, place more adhesive on that and tape my entire card front to my note card. And this card is finished. What is a handmade card without the sentiment? Once you open up Cricut Design Space, you'll hit New Project and then navigate to the left toolbar and hit the T for text. Here, you will type out whatever word or sentiment you want for your greeting card. Text box popped down way at the bottom of the screen, so I'll just move this up so you guys can see it. And I'll zoom in a little, but I typed out hello in my text box. Similar to shapes, you can adjust the size, the height, or the width of your letters or words. Design Space also allows you to do a couple of special things with your words. It, uh, it can increase or decrease the spacing between the letters. It can also curve your uh, sentiments if you wish. That will be for another video, so stay tuned for a tutorial on that. But for this, I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm just going to type out the word hello. Um, I just hit undo so it wouldn't, it took the curve out of my word. I'll shrink it down just a little bit. You can also bold or italicize your font if um, the font you choose allows for it. 
Once I'm happy with my design, I'm just going to uh, set this aside on the design space. I'm going to hit the T button on the left toolbar again to create another text box. And this time I'm going to create a uh, scripty font for my sentiment. So the font of the text automatically defaults to what you use last. And now that I have my how are you phrase selected, I'm going to go through my list of fonts. Um, some are free within Cricut uh, Design Space, some are not, some I have on my own, I purchased from someone else. And I'll select one that, um, that I really like. And for this one, you'll see that, you know, even if you decrease the letter space, it's still a little wonky. So for script words, you're going to have to do a couple extra steps to get the appropriate cut for your design. For these kinds of cuts, I'm going to first select the size that I want, even though I know the spacing isn't quite right. Uh, I have to choose the size first. Then with my text box selected, I'm going to navigate to the right menu and hit ungroup. This will separate all of those letters and those words into separate letters and separate uh, layers, if you will. See on the right, there's a bunch of different layers now. Then I will select each, le uh, each letter and move them until I think, um, you know, they connect correctly and how I want it to look. To make things easier to move, I then will select each group of letters and then hit group back on the right. And now I have three different groups of letters. And this will just make it easier for me to move each grouping um, within design space. This will help you get an idea of how your design is going to look and it's just easier to move these pieces around. You can also take this time to increase the sizes of your words if you want to. Increasing the sizes or just zooming in a little bit might help you see some errors or mistakes um, within your original text that you want to fix before you hit make it. In my example, the letter U and the word U was just a little off from the letter O. So I'm going to hit ungroup and then I can move this U to where it looks a little bit cleaner um, for my card. Then I will select the whole group of letters again and hit group to make it one group again. Once you are happy with your design, you're going to hit the green make it button to go to the next step. Cricut will arrange your design on a uh, to make it more space saving if you're using the full uh, width of the cutting mat, but I'm not. So I'm going to just move these over to the left because I'm using up some scrap paper. This preview screen can definitely be a lifesaver if you um, want to cut you know, a certain size of material. And when you're happy with the placement, you just hit continue to go on to the next screen to send it to your machine. It's the same steps as before. You're going to put your material um, where your design is to be cut as shown on the preview screen. And then you'll open your machine. Make sure that the um, proper material is selected with that knob. And then you'll hit the load and unload button to load your cutting, cutting mat. And then hit the Cricut button, the C button to begin cutting your design. It just takes a few minutes to cut. You could, um, you know, clean up your desk or do something else, uh, depending on how intricate your design is. And then once it's done, the uh, load and unload button will start blinking again and you can unload your cutting mat. And instead of closing out design space, I'm actually going to run my design through my machine again, this time with some black cardstock. That is definitely an advantage of this machine is the ability to mass produce with, you know, little to no effort on your part. It's just simply loading and unloading your cutting mat. Then I'll take a few minutes to just carefully peel up all of these word cuts. And having a scraper definitely helps to um, helps with these delicate scripty word cuts here. And I'll put my protective sheet back on and get ready to make my card. To help me arrange the hello word, I'm going to use the negative piece of the word cut as a template to place all of these letters in there. This helps me to get the word straight as well as the spacing of the letters accurate as well. Then I will simply peel up that template with all of my letters glued down. Scripty words are a little bit easier to place and glue down since they just come in one piece. You'll notice I'm putting down all of these words in the 
black card stock slightly uh, to the left of my card front and not centered. Well, that's because it's going to become the shadow. And I'm going to place the white card stock cutouts um, over top of the dark card stock. Once my card front is nice and dry, I'll run some tape runner along my note card and adhere the card front to it. And this card is finished. The Cricut machine not only cuts and scores, it also can draw onto your cardstock or paper crafts. First, I'll create a text box with the words that I want, and then I'm going to choose a Cricut writable font. When writing for your paper crafts using a Cricut, you can't just use any font you want. You have to use a Cricut font that is specified for writing. And so when you're searching for fonts, you can hit filter and choose the fonts that are only used for writing and that will help narrow down um, which font you want to use. When I use the writing feature for Cricut, I also like the machine to cut out my design as well. That way I know it's centered. So to show you how to do that, I'm going to uh, card front that is size for A2 so that would be a four and a quarter by five and a half inch rectangle and I do that by selecting the square I hit unlock um, that little button down at the left corner and then I enter my dimensions in at the top toolbar and that'll help create the exact dimensions I want since you selected a writing font for your words the Cricut software machine will know to write those fonts and for your shape you want to make sure when you select it it has um, a it's selected to cut from there i just play with my design to make sure it's horizontally and vertically aligned so i'll select it all and select alignment and then that uh, the software will help align all it will help center all of these things for me I'm going to type out the word you here so I have a complete sentiment. And once your design is finalized, don't hit make it quite yet. There's a very important step. And the next step is to select all of your design and then navigate to the bottom right corner and hit attach. And what hitting attach does is that it kind of puts like a paper clip to your design because before you had separate layers you had the miss you and the card front cutting file and now what you do by hitting attach is you're telling Cricut to combine those into one um, pass through on your machine here's where i'll demonstrate so my machine is blinking it's ready to go it's ready to load actually so i'm going to put my card stock onto my cutting mat I will load my cutting mat, but you'll see that there's an empty slot in slot A, and that is to hold a pen. I'm using a Cricut pen or marker, whatever you call it, and I'm going to uh, secure that in there. Slot A is for writing and drawing or scoring, and slot B is to cut. So now, now that both are set, I'm going to press the Cricut button and it will begin to draw out or write out my sentiment using the pen. Once it's done writing out my sentiment, the machine will automatically switch over to then cut out the entire card front using the blade in slot B. You don't have to touch a thing, the whole thing just does it for you. And then once it's done, the blinking load and unload button will blink and you're ready to unload your project. Now for this, since it's a card front, I want it to be as straight as possible and you know not without any warping or curling. So to prevent that, I'm going to flip the entire thing over and peel the mat off the paper versus the paper off the mat. And that'll help make sure that my card front is still nice and straight. I trimmed this card front down a little because I realized I wanted a white frame with my note card. So after I trimmed it down, I'm going to uh, add another sub sentiment and then I will adhere it to my note card with some more tape runner and this card is finished. Your Cricut machine can also cut layering images. After you open up Design Space and hit Images on the left toolbar, you'll see that the Cricut Design Space has a huge library of images to use. If you have Cricut Access, that's even better because you'll have access to even more images to cut from. And so you can search all kinds of images. I'm going to search for a flower and I'm going to choose this one here and while this one is not a layering image um, I'm going to make it one <laughs> first I'll hit duplicate so I can cut out a bunch of these flowers at once then I'll select the circle 
option on the shapes button to make uh, the center of all of my flowers and I just resize it to how I want it to look on the flower and then once I'm happy with it then I'll duplicate the circles too. Notice that the color of the circles are different than the colors of the flowers. That is intentional because I want um, each different shape to be on a different mat and that'll make sense in a little bit. So now I'm going to create a custom stem piece by just selecting a square shape and then unlocking it and making it the dimensions I need it to be nice and tall and skinny. Then I will go on to make a couple of copies of that. And you'll notice on the right menu, you'll see that all of the different shapes are grouped by color. And this is important once you hit make it because then you'll see that each of the shapes show up on a different colored mat. And, and this helps to remind you to change the mat every time the machine is cutting out a different shape. Something to note is that the color, the actual color of each shape doesn't matter. It's just telling you to, um, you know, change the mat. You can use any color you want. You can use, you can color coordinate it with the actual cardstock you're using, or you just use it as a placeholder. So now you hit continue to send it to the cutting machine. Mat one will be the first one to pass through. And if you remember, that was the circles. So I'm just loading up my cardstock and then hit cut and make sure my material option is correct and then let the machine do its thing. It'll also show you on your computer screen that you know your first mat is done and it's time to move on to the second mat. So after peeling off all of my daisy circles then I will load some more cardstock onto the same cutting mat this time for the stems. Remember on the preview screen, it showed me where it was going to cut and it was going to cut right before the three inch marks. So I knew to put my cardstock before the three inch mark on to my cutting mat. Then the machine will do its thing <laughs> and cut out all of these skinny little stems. And you'd be surprised at how uh, skinny this, uh, this machine can cut. In fact, I almost had a little trouble peeling it off of my cutting mat because the cuts were so delicate. It was great, but you know, nice and sharp, but it was delicate. So my uh, computer screen told me to move on to the next mat, which were the daisies themselves. So that is when I load up some more cardstock onto my cutting mat and feed it through the machine. Now on this mat is when I wasn't paying attention. So I put my cardstock down, not realizing that they were going to cut five flowers across and I only have room for four on my cardstock. So I'm going to put my finger on the pause button. So when it gets done with that fourth flower, I'm going to pause all of the cutting and then unload my mat and no harm, no foul. The blade doesn't go on the mat and my flowers are still cut. I just have four instead of five. Once all of my images and designs were peeled off the cutting mat, I started to assemble them. I first put the circles on top of the daisies and then attach all of the daisies to their stems and then arrange them on my card front uh, to form a nice little garden of flowers. To complete the card, I added a stamped and heat embossed sentiment strip right across the top. And then I cut off all the excess cardstock hanging off the edge. Then I added it to a note card with some tape runner and this card is finished. With this machine, you can also cut out entire cards where all you have to do is just fold it and put it in an envelope. So as I mentioned before, I am a member of Critic Access, so I have a you know access to a lot more designs. There are some free designs um, if you don't have the membership. But uh, you know, I think the membership is pretty worth it to have you know access to 100,000 plus designs. So I chose this card design. You can see once you click on it, you can see you know how long it's going to take, what the finished size it's going to be, and see if it's something you want to make. So I chose this design. It comes grouped. I'm going to ungroup it because I don't want to cut out the envelope. Um, I have a bunch of A2 size envelopes to use. So I'm just going to make sure that this is an A2 size card. So I go up to the top toolbar and change the dimensions. So it's eight and a half inches wide and five and a half inches tall. This will make sure that when it's folded, it'll be four and a quarter inches wide and five and a half inches tall. 
I'm just gonna make sure that it's, you know, I'm happy with the design and then once I hit make it, it's going to cut out the entire piece. It's like, a, you know, having an entire cover plate die cut out your entire card. Um, but you don't have to pay for an expensive die. <laughs> You'll notice the design has score lines down the middle and that is for scoring. So you'll definitely need a Cricut scoring tool to use if you're going to, um, if you want to make these type of paper crafts. I will then place my cardstock onto my cutting mat and then you see slot A is empty and that's where your scoring tool goes and your scoring tool looks like this. It just, it's, you know, has a scoring point and a little, I don't know, decorative <laughs> a hole up on top. And then I'll lock that in and then I'll press the load button to load my cutting mat and then I'll press the Cricut button so it, be, it can begin cutting out my design. Once my machine was done cutting, it took about five minutes or so because this is, you know, some a somewhat intricate design with all those little lines. Then I'm going to peel up, um, you know, all of the negative space I don't need and just pop out all of those extra pieces. And some cardstock does cut better than others. I think I'm using like a lightweight cardstock here and. Um, it didn't cut that great, but I'm working with it because it's still a great design. Overall, it's still a great design. I didn't do that great of a job of folding on the scored line. So my design is just a tiny bit off, but it's an easy fix for that. I'm just going to put this in my paper trimmer and cut off that excess. I also cut out another piece to go on the back of that great card front. And then I'll just put down some liquid glue on all of the empty spaces I can. I use a liquid adhesive that dries clear so you can hardly see any of the glue once it's nice and dry. Then I will add a sub sentiment on here that I stamped in heat embossed prior. And uh, there's a little uh, place I tore the card stock on the inside so I'll just cut off that excess there. But that card is finished and I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all these Cricut card making techniques. Tell me, do you have a Cricut or do you want one? Why or why not?